Beauty isn't all about a luscious set of lips or rock hard abs. Your brain looks for more subtle clues that indicate whether a person is healthy. Right, external beauty is only part of the whole picture. Even before MRIs and blood tests, our brains could sense authentic beauty in a fraction of a second. Because authentic beauty reflects health. Our new book will not only help you look your best, but also feel your best. Because when you feel good, you look good. It's all part of you being beautiful, inside and out. I'm Dr. Mike Roizen. And I'm Dr. Mehmet Oz. In one of life's many injustices, a lot of us have the frustrating experience of losing hair in places we want to keep it, like the scalp, and growing it in places where we want to lose it, perhaps the back and the shoulders for men, and the chin and around the belly button for women. Though there are plenty of remedies that can help eliminate unwanted hair, like Nair Hair Dissolver, waxing, shaving, and even laser therapy, keeping your hair can be more challenging. To see where you stand in the hair department, let's do the main squeeze test for women. Grab a group of hairs on your head, aim for about 60, or the amount that would fit through a straw. Starting at the base, gently tug out the hairs, pulling up and out. If more than a tenth of the hairs that you clump together at the beginning come out when you pull, it's a sign that you may be experiencing some accelerated hair loss. Men can test themselves by combing their hair for 60 seconds onto a white towel. If more than 10 strands of hair develop from the comb, you've got a problem. The average person's head is up to 150,000 follicles. That number's hereditary, so it's constant over your lifetime. Only thickness, condition, and whether you lose the actual strands that come from those follicles can change. Let's take a closer look at some of these strands. Here's a close-up of what the side of your scalp might look like. And you see that little bulb at the very bottom? That's what gives rise to the hairs. It's fed by a color that gives it the, the, the sheen that it wants. But if you look at the surface of the hair that's above the skin, it's actually dead. And it has tiles on it. And those tiles actually are damaged by blow drying and the rest. When you grow new hair, they sprout up from that germinal area. But sometimes if they're poisoned by it's a chemical related to testosterone, you actually grow peach fuzz. You don't lose the hairs. They actually come out very thin. While we tend to say that baldness comes from the mother's side, an individual genes from both parents influence that person's predisposition to baldness. Of course, hair loss is far more visible in the 80% of men who experience some degree of baldness, but nearly 40% of women also lose substantial amounts of hair after menopause, making it a major appearance issue for both genders. And rapid hair loss is often a sign that you ought to have a battery of tests to evaluate your nutrition, health, and hormone levels. And that makes an important point. Hair loss isn't just an appearance issue. It can be a sign that something's wacky, like anemia or thyroid disease, is going on elsewhere in your body. Here are a few hair tips to consider. Practice good hair hygiene. Most of what we do to our hair is hairicidal. We overwash it, we blast it with hot air, we bleach it, and then we dye it. Unless you've been working under your car for a few hours, you can choose to wash your hair just about every two or three days. On other days, just rinse and massage your scalp with plain water. And by the way, there are lots of chemicals on these bottles. You don't have to understand them all. What you have to understand them is, is whether or not they agree with your scalp and whether they cause inflammation. High hair dryer heat and the kind of heat you get from curling irons causes the water under the outer, outermost layer of hair to form bubbles that stress and break the hair in those tiles that I showed earlier in the animation. You'll get these dreaded split ends and your colleague's hair will outshine yours. It's also best to blot your hair dry with a towel and then use low heat if you use a dryer. Your hair is actually most vulnerable when it's wet and you should treat your hair almost like you would treat a silk blouse. Don't iron it or heat it to extremes. Also, it's smart to use a brush with a tooth or rounded teeth or bristles, which will massage the hair and scalp without damaging them. Now, we're not recommending that you scrub your scalp with salmon, although the thought has crossed our minds. But the omega-3 fatty acids found in fish, distilled fish oils, or in DHA supplements from algae are the primary nutritional component that makes hair shinier. Other recommended foods include walnuts, eggs, milk, green tea. There's also a connection between balding and eating animal fat, particularly red meat, because high fat diets lead to more DHT production and more damage to your hair follicles. Instead, make caffeine your vice, 
which has been shown over time and through a series of reactions to decrease DHT levels. Get yours via green tea, which also has been shown to help slow balding by slowing down DHT production. Now there's not much in the way of hard science that shows a direct link between these foods and pedestrian stopping hair. But anyone who has pets knows that the better you feed your pets, the better their coats look. They feel softer and their sheen is brighter. Make sure to share these tips with your friends when they ask for how your hair got so much body.